I just feel like this is something you guys should be clued in on in the coming days because I don't know how the situation is going to develop further. And there may come a day soon where I'm in, I, I may need to reach out to the community for help. Okay, so here's, here's a lowdown of what's going on. In case you have no idea, haven't been looking at the news at all, right now there is a significant buildup of Russian troops along the Ukrainian border. If you don't know, yes, I live in Ukraine. I've been living here for several years, and uh, it's been very peaceful. It's been a very nice place to live, and uh, I have a home here. I have my dog, Nora. I have my cat, Tallulah, and uh, so... Well, we'll talk more about them in a second because having animals obviously makes it a little bit more difficult for me to leave. So uh, let me see if I can show you exactly what we're facing. Uh, all right, so here is a map that shows the buildup of Russian forces near the borders of Ukraine. Now, this was posted by one of the correspondents for Financial Times, and Financial Times actually did a really good article about how serious Putin is about invading Ukraine, about uh, basically all of the reasoning behind it. It's, it's a lot here, so if you're interested in knowing more in depth about the situation, uh, you can check this article, which I'm probably going to put here in the chat. Okay, so according to this uh, map, you can see that there is, right now I think they said there's about 100,000 troops along the border, but this is actually not the entire picture because Belarus is allied with Russia and now we've heard that there are troops heading in to Belarus from Russia. This was posted in India today. Russia moves troops to Belarus for major war games near Ukraine border. We know that uh, Russia is going to be doing joint military exercises with the Belarusian military in February. That was just announced a couple days ago. So uh, basically, uh, it's not looking good for... I, I live like around here, okay? And it's looking like... It, it definitely feels like an encirclement is taking place with Crimea being uh, annexed illegally by Russia and an ongoing war that has been going on here in the Donetsk, Donetsk area, the Donbass region. So uh, I don't want people to act to feel like, oh, this is all of a sudden, there hasn't been any, any aggression until now because uh, in the southeastern region of Ukraine, there has been an ongoing conflict happening for eight years um, with that war in Donbass with proxy soldiers. Now, actually, Regarding the war that's been going on in Donbass for eight years, honestly, here in Kiev, people have not been too, I don't want to say that people haven't been worried about it. People have been upset about it, but people haven't felt like the conflict would move further west. Um, people have pretty much just been going about their daily lives and not, not thinking about it that much, unless you know people that are in the front lines or have like, you know, personal connections to this area. Now, uh, if you want to read more about the war in Donbass, you can actually, um, I know Wikipedia isn't that great of a source, but it does list here on Wikipedia, like how the Russian troops are involved, Russian paramilitary troops, basically separatists that are backed and funded and get all their arms and everything from Russia. It's all like all that information is here uh, regarding that pro-Russian separatists. And uh, actually, a little bit more information about the war that's been going on in Donbass. And this is relevant. This is relevant to what's happening now. Uh, there is this war reporter that I have been following on Twitter named Nolan Peterson. He has been a war reporter in Ukraine, spending time on the front lines. And uh, he had been talking about, he actually posted this article that I thought was really, really well written about what it's been like on the front line in uh, Donbass region. Modern trench warfare in eastern Ukraine. This is, it's been pretty horrific there. And uh, I think 1.7 million people have been displaced from that area. He, uh, yeah, like 14,000 people killed. Europe's only ongoing land war that's been happening there. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the chat too. 
While this lion's share of fighting is not done by Russian soldiers these days, it's not official roles, Russian soldiers that are doing this. The campaign is sustained by Russian cash and armaments. For its part, Moscow denies having a hand in the war. So they act like they're not, in, they don't have any part in this. And uh, I mean, then they act like, you know, Ukraine is being hostile to them, even though they have been funding this for eight years. So altogether, the conflict in Donbass blends modern weapons and technology with battlefield conditions similar to that of the World War I trenches. Like there are actual trenches there. The Donbass trenches have now existed for twice as many years as those of World War I. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to get too deep, deep into the Donbass conflict, okay? I don't need to, uh, but just for a little bit of context about what is going on, what has been going on in Ukraine. Like, this isn't a sudden aggression. We've had aggression. But the fear is now, now it's different. Now people everywhere, like where I live, are actually scared because uh, of the buildup of troops all along the border and now this new military alliance that Russia has with Belarus where like we feel like there's an encirclement happening and uh, people, okay, so that's not the only reason. So some other reasons why I started, people started to worry. Uh, just to give you more context over like what has been dinging the alarm bells, so to speak, here in Ukraine. Uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, now this was yesterday. She said this. Welcome that. But where things stand right now, President Putin has created this crisis by amassing 100,000 Russian troops along Ukraine's borders. This includes moving Russian forces into Belarus recently uh, for joint exercises and conducting additional exercises on Ukraine's eastern border. So let's be clear. Our view is this is an extremely dangerous situation. We're now at a stage where Russia could at any point launch an attack in Ukraine. Uh, and what Secretary Blinken is going to go do. Okay, so yeah, she basically said Russia could attack at any point, and she's talking about uh, Secretary Blinken, who was going to go into Kiev. He got here last night, Secretary, uh, the U.S. Secretary, ah, uh, U.S. Secretary of State, uh, Antony Blinken. He just got here into Kiev last night, and uh, regarding what he said today, today, he said that Russia could attack at short notice. And uh, he also said, we know that there are plans in place to increase that force regarding the Russian buildup even more on very short notice. And that gives President Putin the capacity also on very short notice to take further aggressive action against Ukraine. Now, obviously, uh, this is pretty, pretty scary news to hear uh, from uh, like officials in my country who are coming here to visit. Here's another, I uh, saw this as well. Officials at the UK Foreign Office have told, have been told to be ready to move into crisis mode at very short notice. This is from yesterday. I uh, already showed you the Financial Times article. And uh, if you go on the official State Department website for Ukraine, you can see that there is a level four do not travel advisory. You should not travel to Ukraine, uh, that is the official advice from my country's State Department. So um, reconsider travel due to increased threats from Russia. This was a warning that was given out late last month. And this was, I think when I first saw this warning go out, that's when I started to think, oh my God, okay, this is actually getting kind of serious. And um, now I am basically trying to plan my next steps, figure out how I can, like what what I would do in the event of an attack. Uh, for me, I, I have been living here for a while and I now have some things that tie me down here more than, than I had in the past, right? Like I have my dog, I have my cat. And um, one thing that complicates matters for me is in trying to get my dog and cat out of the country. Um, Ukraine is considered a high risk rabies country for dogs. And so this means that there's a lot of extra paperwork that I need to do. And there's like a very specific timeline in which that must be done for you to get a dog out of Ukraine and into US. So, uh, it seems like, for just for my initial research, I could be wrong, I I'm probably would not be able to get Nora out of the country until summer, like four months from now. 
Um, so that's a concern. I might be able to get her into the EU sooner than that, but I don't know. But obviously these are all things that are on my mind and it's really, really scary. I think getting a cat out is going to be a little bit easier for me. Um, but I mean, it's, it's really, it's been really, really frightening to have to consider all of this and think about, okay, well, what about everything else in my house, right? Like, where will I go in America? Like, well, how long will I stay there? Maybe I should just go somewhere in EU, but then how long would I be there? Maybe I should go somewhere in the West. That was something I was considering, like going somewhere West. But then what about all my friends that are in Kiev that could be under threat? Like, what if, what if there is an attack coming like this way and like, it, I still wouldn't be safe here, you know? These are a lot of questions I've been asking myself. And also, I'm really like, I apologize if this sounds like fear mongering. Okay, I don't want to do that. I just, I wanted to talk to, about this to y'all because I feel like at this point, there have been enough official sources letting me know that an attack could be imminent. Like legitimate, respectable government sources saying that uh, this is something I need to be prepared for. And since uh, we're a family, you know, we're a community. I, I need to inform you about it so that if something does happen and I need to up and leave on very short notice and like I'm panicking or something on social media, you have at least some background and some context for what's happening that we can talk about now in a more civilized way, if that makes sense. Like I, I want to be wrong about this and I hope I'm wrong about this. Yeah, I am prepping now. I'm starting to prep now. Like I'm going to have, I'm getting my bug out bag ready so that uh, I can like, basically right now what I'm thinking is, if there's an actual attack coming from the north, which um, this is like two hours away. Kiev is like two or three hours away from this border right here. Uh, I will just get the bug out bag, get the dog and cat in the car and just head west. Just go west and find somewhere. Uh, but it's just, yeah, yeah. This is, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lenoriel. I'm glad you understand. <laughs> this is not fear mongering. I don't want to blow anything out of proportion. Um, but we do need to be aware and educated on the situation now, on the risks that I'm facing. What's the plan if you have to leave without your dog? Uh, so I have several people I know here in the area where I could leave Nora with, but uh, ideally I would want to move somewhere. Like if an attack started, like today or tomorrow, I would get my dogs, go somewhere west, find a place to live temporarily where my dog and cat can be safe, and then from there plan my next steps, trying to keep my uh, pets with me, if at all possible. I'm not Ukrainian. I live in Ukraine. I'm from America. I'm from the U.S. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's really... Oh, here's another thing I, I wanted to show you here. So... This was Yeah, I had heard a lot of news about this, about the ballistic missile launchers that are seen moving west through Russia towards Ukraine. I don't know how true that is. They say that it's not going to Ukraine, but they did say that it's extremely dangerous. So, I, I don't know, like I'm also I also think it's a good idea a lot of times to take this kind of news with a grain of salt because I have to ask myself, well, what would certain news organizations benefit from certain kinds of information? But, oh my gosh, I don't know. I can't worry about all that. Basically, <laughs> basically, uh, things are really pretty, pretty unsettling at the current, at the moment, at the moment. So, yeah. Yeah, I would recommend prepping your pets now. That's what I've got to do right away. Like I need to take, I need to take Nora and Tallulah, the cat, to the vet, try to get everything they need. I'm going to talk to the vet about what we need for the International Pet Pass Forward, how quickly I can get all that done, and um, just hope I have more time than I think I do. Yeah. Uh... I don't want to be a fear monger either, but two hours when you get warned the moment they cross the border, the first thing they'll do is triple information so you won't know. I mean, 
I mean, that's a that's a concern too. There, I mean, you can really drive yourself crazy thinking about all of the worst case scenarios. And I've gone through them all, trust me. Like I've asked myself, well, what if we lose internet? Like what if the internet connections are cut off? Like what if the, like all the ISPs are cut off? What if, um, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, but um, what's going on? So basically I'm just giving everyone a little brief on the situation that's happening in Ukraine because I live in Ukraine and uh, I just wanted to educate everybody on it. So the UK has already started sending, sending troops and weapons to Ukraine in preparation for an invasion. Yeah, the UK has been incredibly helpful, actually. The UK has been going above and beyond for Ukraine, um, sending the anti-tank weapons and sending people to help train the army and just being really supportive and uh so i mean as a person living in ukraine that makes me feel better but um yeah i, I don't know uh, basically i wish i could wrap all this up with a pretty bow and say you know i have a i, I mean i kind of do have a plan i don't want to say that i don't have a plan the plan is if something happens Get the bug out bag, get the get the animals, and uh, go west. Well, and then while I'm in the west, figure out my next steps. But uh, I really can't say more than that. And I just wanted to clue y'all in on it, so that way you'll know if I'm like suddenly asking for uh, help and support on, on Twitter, or I'm like, or if you don't know what happened, <laughs> now you know. So um, I hope everything's gonna be okay. I am hoping for the best, but I'm also preparing for the worst. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry to, like, have such a depressing conversation, but this is something that's completely out of my control. How close to the Russian... Well, the thing is that um, I live around here, and Russia is apparently, apparently working together with the military of Belarus, moving troops to Belarus right now so if they are gonna do that uh then they could access where i'm at from about two hour drive so ronald loca I, I really can't tell you how much i appreciate that uh yeah that's why i'm i'm just i'm a little bit freaked out okay like this whole week i have been pretty freaked out about the situation and i'm trying to you know, not think about it during the stream, most of the stream, and, like, just have fun and, like, try to enjoy the peace time that I currently have uh, without freaking out constantly, right? But I'm still pretty worried, <laughs> so I wanted to just let you know about it, and so thanks for listening for that. You're next to EU, don't worry. USA is worse and more dangerous. You know what? I wish that I could say that you were wrong, but when I lived in America... Uh, I lived in a kind of a bad area in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for a while, for like, like two years. No, no, more than two years. Five years. I don't know why I said two years. I was there for a long time. And uh, it was so dangerous where I lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I would hear gunshots outside my window all the time. I knew several people who had been shot. Uh, actually, one of my friends was shot and killed when he was just standing outside of his apartment uh i remember one time i was at work and a guy called in sick to work because he said he had been shot um like i like i wouldn't say everyone i knew but like a significant number of the people that i knew had been shot at some point i remember one time my best friend uh, she happened to leave her apartment for like an hour and during that time when she was gone uh there were gunshots fired from the apartment under her, and if she had been home, she probably would have been struck with a bullet. Like, it went through her floor. So, I definitely, like, that wasn't very safe either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, I mean, being in America doesn't mean that you'll be safe, dude. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. Probably depends on what city you're in, what part of town you're in. That's Baton Rouge, man. Baton Rouge is, is, it's rough. It is a rough town. Uh, actually, I found out after I moved out of my uh, apartment in Baton Rouge that I lived in, 
that someone a couple doors over had bodies buried in their backyard. Yeah. So that was terrifying. There are very safe pockets of the U.S. Yeah, I mean, where I grew up in the U.S., it was a small town, really small town in Louisiana. It was very, very safe there. Right now, I'm do trying to take all of the necessary precautions. Be ready to leave at a moment's notice. That is the thing I need to do now. It's the thing I need to do now. <laughs> Join team OTK and bum in the streamer house. What a terrible way <laughs> to show up there. I hope not. I hope I don't have to do that. <laughs> 